So Ramiro wanted so that somebody from Galicia came here, <laughs> and we uh, will try to illustrate why. And one of the first things is that the marine sector if of, is of great interest in Galicia. And there I show uh, the main uh, uh, economical activities related to the sea in Galicia. And you have the Ria de Vigo with the muscle rafts that have been there since the 60s, exploiting muscles. And also the, the, the fleet that exploit the small pelagic fisheries in Galicia and northern Portugal. And those are uh, sardine pusu sailors from the Galician fleet. So some words about our Spanish Institute of Oceanography. So we are a research institute. So we carry out scientific research. And we are a specialized institute only devoted to oceanography and sea sciences. We have the responsibility to advise the government in terms of fishing and marine policies. And as we will see afterwards, we are the Spanish ISIS representatives and our scientists go to different uh, meetings to give the advice for, for, for ISIS and for the governments to, 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 to do this uh, quota uh, <laughs> um, uh, decisions. So, and that's why we represent Spain in different things. We need to promote uh, cooperation and training of marine researchers. And now some words about our aquaculture operations. And this is uh, a slide uh, emphasizing that uh, uh, closures of uh, uh, harvesting areas due to uh, events of denophysis uh, species uh, having uh, DSP toxins, like Thomas has told us before, uh, cause a large number of days of closures every day. And these are data of, uh, from 93 to 2010 of number of days that these uh, harvesting areas have been closed and, uh, because of toxins. And as you can see, there's interannual variability, but in the main rias, Vigo and Pontevedra, uh, there are some years when you have even more than two th 200 uh, days of closures due to, to, due to toxins. And even though it's, uh, they make money out of it. So, <laughs> so this is, uh, we were also participating in the Asimuth. Uh, a project that Thomas was talking to us about before. And uh, in this slide, I show you the offices accuminata concentrations in the weekly monitoring stations. So monitoring is a responsibility of the Galician government in the muscle harvesting areas in Galicia. So every week, they monitor uh, toxins and uh, uh, toxic flight phytoplankton, and they, see, they get something like this. So as you can see, this is from March to July, and this is the spring season when the Nophysis accuminata start to appear almost every year. So you, you have a high variability. So they start, uh, they go there every Monday, and they s get something like this. So when it, it's red, it's very high concentration, but when it's around this green, it is starting to uh, originate uh, problems. So our aim or our idea is, was that can a focus model help us understand and predict the observed variability in hub species? So it's a kind of a science question. So it's, uh, can you, we understand the environment and the environment is driving this variation? Or it's also a technical question. Can we get some information out of our uh, running models to give, the, to give some forecast or some information about the risk? So we, we started the same um, way that Thomas was uh, uh, telling us before, that we're starting to 
uh, weekly to disseminate uh, information and to gather information about phytoplankton counts and advection of harvest species and also giving information from models on a cross and a longshore transport. And in the case of Galicia, there we have harvesting in, uh, in the estuaries. We also try to evaluate retention in Galician rias. So we, we, we gather different information, including in situ data and satellite data from CMEMS. And this is an illustration in autumn 2013, when along shore transport from Portuguese areas uh, resulted in the arriving of toxic species in, in Galicia. And these are in, in, the, in, in, the, in, in this part, you can see in, in blue and in red that we release particles from uh, harvesting areas that in, in Portugal. Portugal is divided in areas for, for uh, phytoplankton, toxic phytoplankton monitoring. And as you can see on these very days, 27th uh, September to 13th September, there was a, a northwest transport associated to a shelf current that uh, more or less you can, you should see, and you have to take my word, uh, it's seen on this cross shelf uh, transits. And what happens is that um, this is before the, the week before the monitoring. Or so the, the, this event of uh, Northwest Transport, and as you can see, there appeared some uh, concentration of Dinophysis species that in the end caused uh, closure. So uh, we can say that uh, if we go on with this, that so far it's a proof of concept uh, uh, process, uh, releasing bulletins. Uh, based on in situ observations and hydrodynamical model down scales in CMEMS and with different other complementary data, we can provide information of transport among harvesting areas, also on water retention and exportation in and out of harvesting areas. And during some of the blooms that are associated with alongshore transport from Portugal to Galicia, uh, we, we have seen that forecast, having a hydrodynamical modeling predicting only advection can serve as a, um, uh, as a sign that there's a risk of the arrival of this toxic species to Galicia. And this is the second part of, of my talk. So my institute is a fisheries research institute. And uh, I, I will talk to you briefly about our work for about the sardine stock and the sardine in is uh, it appears all around Europe but these are the stocks for in the south they call it a northern and southern stocks of uh, exploitation of sardine we have some northern stock that is in Ireland UK and France waters and the southern stock that is uh, the stock of interest for the Galician and for the Portuguese uh, fleet that is along the Cantabrian Sea and along the western Iberian uh, coast. And it's a very, uh, <coughs> the importance of this uh, fishery, the sardine stock, is because of, uh, it has a strong socioeconomic uh, impact and these are uh, figures from our recent uh, uh, report to the European Parliament. So uh, our scientists, uh, Spanish, Portuguese, French scientists went to the European Parliament because the sardine stock biomass is reducing and they were this Monday on the European Parliament uh, gathering information and saying that it has high socioeconomic impact in the coastal regions. So this is what I was talking to you about, the sardine in the southern stock is reducing. So here I show you data from 78 to 2014. So catches have been uh, reducing. Recruitment is changing. So there are some years of high recruitment, 
but from 2004 there has been no year of high recruitment. Mortality, yeah, even though catches were reducing, fishing mortality uh, was, uh, was being uh, high, so there was a lot of uh, fishing, and biomass of the stock was reducing. So there are some uh, hints in these uh, in these plots that there are some environmental control of the of the stock of the sardine stock, but there's also some effect on of fishing that is causing mortality uh, on the stock. So what can we do with uh, models? So we have been uh, taking advantage of the CMMS uh, solution in the Atlantic area for running biophysical models of sardine early life stages. With early life stages, we are talking about eggs, larvae, and then uh, larvae are juveniles, and then they are uh, fish that move with a different <laughs> dynamics. But eggs and larvae are kind of uh, plankton, so they are very influenced by, by the hydrodynamics. So we have run a hydrodynamical model coupled with an ecological model, and we have taken advantage of the Heinka simulation of the 2005-2015. So we have not been able to run the, the full 10 years, so, but we have run different years uh, using this uh, PSY4 version 2. It is called, it's more euphonic, Gloffy uh, 112 <laughs> CMN's product. And we have run the simulations in our Galician Supercomputing Center. And afterwards, with the results of this hydrodynamics and this ecosystem model, we have run this biophysical modeling for simulating the effect of environment on sardine in this stock. And uh, this is the approach, the physical model, the ecological model that gives us nutrients, phytoplankton and zooplankton. And zooplankton is what uh, sardine larvae uh, eat. And then we have a, a model that is a Lagrangian model, an individual-based model, where we uh, introduce advection, advection and dispersion of particles and then we introduce some biological behavior. Growth depends on temperature, uh, there's feeding of larvae, and, and so on. And what can, you, what can we do with this? We can do some, several experiments on the biology of the species. So we release particles. So there's uh, eggs that are spawned from, the, from sardines at different um, uh, times and places in the, along the shelf. There's, there are uh, places where sardines spawn, and we can calculate uh, the, the growth of larvae, or we can compute the zooplankton distribution from the model at the position of late larvae. So larvae that are, uh, already move and can, uh, can feed. So these are plots uh, where we can see the, the, the f or we can estimate the available food for late larvae of sardine. So if there is late larvae are, uh, end in a place where there's food, there's so plankton, they are they have more possibilities of survive and transform into juveniles and then uh, be part of the sardine stock. And these are the, the last uh, two slides with uh, another applications. So as you, as you have seen, uh, beaches are, are uh, very interesting. We are very interested in, in giving information about beaches, about temperature and weather conditions. Uh, we have a, a site is Playa CEO.s where we give information on different beaches on the Atlantic coast. And we use CMS results for validation of our uh, models as a fallback on solution. If our model is not working, we get CMS uh, results. And also for extending the area covered. For example, our model domain doesn't go into the Gulf of Cadiz, but we can uh, provide some information based on Siemens uh, EB uh, solution. And uh, Ramiro wanted somebody from Galicia 
to come here because we are part of the Raya Observatory, where we, different people, different research institutes and universities and companies from Galicia and Northern Portugal are developing products and services and our, this development is based on the CMEMS and for different uses, uh, harbors, the shellfish industry, fisheries, and this is a, a slide from Juan Taboada from Mateo Galicia that he wanted to come but he wasn't able to, showing that they also have a downscaling from the CMMs and different uh, uh, domains in the Galician rias, and they are providing different products. For example, they are releasing bulletins for the fisheries association to help them uh, plan their activities. And this is the conclusions. We have developed and illustrated a suite of products for fisheries and aquaculture based on numerical simulations and in situ and satellite observation taking advantage of CMEMS. We have not developed services, but we have done a proof of concept that these downstream services can give uh, information of use for final users, and uh, not only in our uh, IEO institute, but also in the community and the Raya Observatory. Okay, and this is we have been doing this for 100 years, my institute, and this is the founder of the institute that has these ideas uh, of developing products back into uh, 1914. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much.